What's up guys? So a few days ago, I uploaded a setup guide for the 3DS emulator Lemonade, which is just a fork of the original 3DS emulator Citra. Now, I have had a few people reach out to me in my messages and comments saying we want a Lime 3DS setup guide next, which this is also just a fork of Citra. And the setup will be completely the same for Lemonade and Lime 3DS. There's no difference. So to save me some time, I will show you where to download it and how to start it up. But I will not walk you through the setup process again because as I said, it's exactly the same as Lemonade. So I will re-upload the setup portion from my Lemonade video once we have Lime 3DS pulled up. Now even though the setup process is the same, I will say I have been testing quite a few games with both of these emulators and I will be honest, Lemonade runs games better than Lime 3DS as of right now, but that can all change in the future after multiple updates. Playing some games in Lemonade will run faster with higher frame rates than in Lime 3DS, but if you only want to play Pokemon games, then honestly, either one of these emulators will be just fine. But I'm sorry, I don't show exclusive Nintendo games running on emulators, but just know that you will get a slightly better experience with Lemonade. Okay, let's head on over to this GitHub page. The link to this page will be in the description below. And the latest version of Lime 3DS as the recording of this video is 2107. Let's scroll down and under assets, you will see your downloads. You have Android downloads, Linux downloads, Mac downloads, and Windows. Since I am on Windows, I'm gonna download this file right here. Now if you don't have 7-Zip installed on your PC, I'm going to leave a link to 7-Zip.org and you can download this program. This is what we're going to use to extract the file. So here's the downloaded Lime 3DS folder on my desktop. Now let's go ahead and extract this. Assuming you already have 7-Zip installed, all you want to do is right click on this file, go to show more options, go up to 7-Zip, and then we can do extract here. And this will create a new folder containing all of our extracted files. We no longer need the zip folder, so let's right click on that and delete it. Now let's open this folder. And inside of this folder, you want to look for this file here. Now let's add our games to the emulator. Go ahead and click on this plus button right here where it says add new game directory. Go ahead and locate wherever you have your 3DS ROMs. In my case, I have them on an external hard drive. Once you have it selected, go ahead and hit select folder. And there we are, games have been uploaded to the emulator. And just to let you know, your game file must be a 3DS file type to be playable in Lime 3DS. To get this file type, use 7-Zip to extract the file. Now at this point in the video, you will see my Lemonade setup. And remember guys, everything you're seeing me do in the Lemonade setup is the same for Lime 3DS. Now let's go up to the top and click on Emulation and go down to configure. Now look over to the left and we're gonna go down to graphics. Starting off with the internal resolution. Now we can bump this all the way up to 10 times but I am not gonna take advantage of that because I don't have a 4K monitor. So I'm gonna do six times at 1440p because my monitor is 1440p. For the texture filter, I'm going to leave it on none, but you have some options you can play around with and see what you like. This will slightly change the textures and lines in your games. Let's come down here under layout and let's select screen layout. So we have the option to use a single screen, large screen, side by side, separate windows and hybrid screen. So right now I'm going to leave it on default, but once we open a game, I will show you what each one of these look like. Back up to the top. Let's go over to advanced. For the graphics API, I'm gonna change this from OpenGL to Vulkan. I get much better performance with this emulator using Vulkan, but if you have a older CPU or GPU, then you may want to try OpenGL because you may get better performance with that. And for the physical device, if your PC has an actual graphics card, then make sure your graphics card is checked. Everything else here, we're gonna leave at default settings. Now let's go back over here to the left and click on controls. 
Now the controller I am going to be using is a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. You can also use an Xbox Series or Xbox One controller or PS5 controller. Now there's two ways I can do this. I can come down here to auto map, then I'm going to press OK, and I'm just going to press any random button on my Switch Pro controller, and the entire controller will be mapped out just like that. Now the reason I am using a Switch Pro Controller is that my X, Y, A and B buttons will be in the same location as on a 3DS. Now say we did want to change some of the buttons around, all you would do is click on the button you want to change. So let's say we want to change the A button, we would click right here and we would press whatever button on our controller we want to become the A button. Now you can do the same thing for your directional pad, your circle pad and your C stick. And if you're confused about the circle pad and the C stick, well the circle pad you will want to use as your left analog stick and the C stick you will want to use as your right analog stick. And if you want to save your controller layout, go up to new and go ahead and give this controller layout a name. I'm just going to call it P1. Okay. And if you want to see your hotkey layout back up here at the top next to input, you will see hotkeys. Now you can browse through these options and you can also change the key layout if you would like. For example, say we wanted to change the key for swap screens, we would come down here, click on it, and you would press whatever key you want to be the new swap screen key. Now let's go back up to the top and click on general, and let's go over here to UI. And right here where it says theme, right now we are on the light theme. You do not have to do this, but I prefer to change this to dark. And this will basically give me a black interface instead of the white interface. Now let's come down here to OK. Now please make sure you hit OK so everything we just set up will save. If you just exit out of your settings, nothing will save. OK. Now I am guessing that the online multiplayer is not active on this emulator yet because if we look in the bottom right, it says not connected. And if we click to find a room, there are none. Now you can try to create your own room by coming up here to multiplayer, create room, and you can go ahead and create a room and see if you can get a friend to find your room. But like I said, I think multiplayer is not active yet. Now let's go ahead and load up a game and I'll do Sonic Generations. Now to show you guys how to change your screen layout, you wanna go up to view, screen layout. Right now we are on default. If we change this to single screen, this is what it looks like. Go back up to view, screen layout, large screen, hybrid screen, side by side, in separate windows. The one I prefer to use is large screen because most of you will use this emulator to play Pokemon games and your main screen will be the large screen and the second screen over to the right will only be your command screen. Now to go full screen, we go back up to view, full screen or hit the F11 key. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I will catch you in the next one. Peace.